Hello everyone. Welcome to the video on Benford law. In this video, we are going to first understand what is this Benford law all about and how to apply Benford law to our data set using Power BI. Benford law is basically the first digit law. That is how many times the first digit occurs in different numbers in our data set. So we basically create a frequency distribution like this. And this applies to a wide variety of data sets like electricity bills, stock prices, invoice numbers, purchase order numbers, inventory, so on and so forth. So whenever you have a set of numbers, you can understand how many times the first digit occurs in your data set and compare it against what Benford suggests. As per Benford law, the first digit number one should occur in your data set in about 30% of the instances. Two should appear 17%, three should appear 12%, four should appear a little less than that at about 10 percent eight should appear about five percent and nine should appear in about four percent approximately less than five percent basically so this is what benford law suggests this is based on the study of leading digits in different data sets and that's how these numbers have been arrived at okay what we do is we compare the number of times the leading digit 1 occurs in our data set and compare it against the Benford suggestion of 30%. We do that for each and every digit and see if there is any difference between the number of times the leading digit appears in our data set versus what Benford recommends. Whenever there is a discrepancy or wide variation between what we have in our data set and what Benford suggests. It invariably points to something going wrong in the data set. That wrong could be intentional or unintentional. It is for us to investigate. It is for us to deep dive. Okay. Benford law has been used extensively in the world of fraud detection. In fact, Benford law has been used to uncover fraud in Enron and other high profile fraud cases. Okay. If you are still unclear as to what is the first digit all about, let me explain this with an example. The electricity bill number, you know, the example I am considering is 213256. Now, what is the first digit in this? It is 2, right? So, the first digit in this number is 2. So, it can also be called as the leading digit. Okay. Let's look at one more example. Invoice number is 5321896. What is the first digit or the leading digit in this? It is 5. Right? So, that's how we go on finding the first digit or the leading digit for each of the numbers in our data set and then we do a frequency distribution and then we compare between what is there in our data set and what Benford suggests. Okay, so what I explained just now we are going to be doing it using Power BI. Right, the data set that I am going to be using is a case of invoice number. Uh, in this example, or rather in this instance, what is the first digit? It is 2, right? Here, it is 6. And what is the first digit here? 1. So, let's load this data set into Power BI, extract the number, that is extract the first digit, and apply the Benford law. Okay. Let us load the data into Power BI. We are going to be making some transformation to the data set 
So instead of loading it, we will first transform the data and then we will load it. Okay, so let's choose this. This is the data set that we uploaded and let's select this and we are going to transform the data. Once you click transform data, it will take you to Power Query Editor. So it is there that we are going to be transforming. Right. So we have to extract the first digit from this. So let's add a column. Okay. And extract. Click extract. It will say first characters. So what is the first character? You need to indicate one because we want to extract the first character or rather the first digit. If you want to extract second digit, you need to indicate two. If you are going to extract the third digit, you have to indicate three. Since we are interested in the leading or the first digit, let's click one because it is the first digit in each of these numbers. So let's click OK. See this, it's been extracted. We will convert the C. If you see this, this is showing us ABC, you know, uh, a character. So let's convert this into whole number because we have to find the number of times number two has appeared in our data set, number three has appeared, number one has appeared, so on and so forth. Let's sort this data. Okay. So how will you sort the data? Click here. If you see lowest to highest. We have sorted it. Right? Now we will be using this column to do the group by. What is group by used for? Group by will tell how many times one has appeared, how many times two has appeared, so on and so forth. So let's click add as a new query. It appears as a list. So it is this that we are going to be using. Let's convert this into a table. Right? Right? See this? We have created a new table named as first characters. We will now sort the data in column 1 and after that we group the data to obtain the number of times the leading digit 1 has appeared, 2 has appeared, 3 has appeared, so on and so forth. We will also sort the column number so that we can see in ascending order how many times leading digit 1 has appeared, 2 has appeared, so on and so forth. Now we have to compute the cumulative percentage. If you have used Excel, you would have divided the number 7 by the sum of values in count and you would have got a percentage. We cannot do like that in Power BI because the referencing to these numbers is not as direct as we have in Excel. So the way we will do is we will first create an index column so that the reference is established. See we have created an index column starting from 1. We then create a custom column where we write the formula to create the cumulative sum first. We first create the cumulative sum and then we find out the percentage of the number of occurrences of different numbers, right? So let's compute the cumulative sum and we will write the formula here, okay? It is showing uh, a red mark here, which means we need to correct something in the formula. I think I have left out a bracket. Once I put it, the red mark goes and we can give OK. So we have the cumulative sum of the count column, right? 7 is 7, 7 plus 30 is 37, 37 plus 4 is 41, 41 plus 18 is 59, so on and so forth. We will now compute the percentage corresponding to the count column, right? So for that we will create a custom column and write the necessary formula there. Let's do it now. 
there is no red mark like what we saw earlier so we can give ok let's convert this into percentage we have converted it into percentage okay now we will add the recommendation from benford law what is there in this column is the actual from our data set that is the number of times one appears as the leading digit is 4.49 in our data set okay so now we will add the recommendation from Benford. For that, we will create column from examples. Let's create this and we will enter the values in this column. I have entered the values here. These are the recommendation from Benford. Let's give OK. And we will convert these also into percentages. Right? Let's click percentage. And we have the percentage also. Right? So let's rename this. This is actual percentage. Okay. This is, we will call this as Benford percentage. Okay. So we have now completed the transformation. We will now use these two columns to create. A bar chart so that we know the extent of difference between actual and Benford recommendation we will then take necessary action post that right let's apply this to complete the process of transformation we will now create the necessary visualization you can see here the actual and Benford percentage, these two are the values that we are going to be using in our bar chart. Okay. So let's go to visualization. You can either use a clustered bar chart or a clustered column chart. The difference between the two is uh, one is horizontal and the other is vertical. So I'm going to use a clustered column chart. Let's click this. We will make this bigger. Okay. And now let's drag the actual and Benford into the values area. We will now drag the index column into axis area. See here the actual and Benford values have been plotted for different digits. Let's uh, customize this visual so we can understand this better. So for customizing the visual, we go to this area. Uh, let's first uh, improve the font of uh, the x-axis. Let's do that. We'll make it bold. Title also, we will uh, increase the font size. Make it bold. Okay. Now let's come to Y axis. We will increase the font size. Okay. And title also we will make it bigger. Okay. And now we will also display the values. So this is off. Let's make it on. And we can improve the font size here as well okay. right and you can also indicate the decimal places we will make this two decimal instead of three decimal right and display unit let's mention none that is fine here okay and uh, what else is left title i want to center it okay let's increase the font of the title as well okay so we are good to go now if you see there is huge variation between actual and benford's recommendation in the case of the first digit third digit 
सेवेंथ डिजिट अन इवन एथ डिजिट सॉरी नॉट सेवेंथ एथ डिजिट द वेरिएशन इज लो इन टू फोर सिक्स सेवन and we can say 9 as well to some extent the rest of the digit that is 1 3 5 8 1 3 5 8 have significant variation so we need to go and investigate as i said in the beginning we are not saying that these are instances of fraud these are areas worth investigating that is invoice number starting with 1 invoice number starting with 3 invoice number starting with 5 invoice number starting with 7 all these are areas of concern for us in fact if i can use the terminology that we typically use in the world of uh, fraud detection and prevention these are all areas of potential non compliance look at the word i'm using potential non compliance you need to go and investigate to rule out any fraudulent uh, activities and uh, take appropriate action right so that's what i wanted to share in this session thank you